So in the last video, we have seen how to add elements into list using values.add and then we have sorted those elements and then we printed that with the help of this statement, right? Now, if, if you want to understand how this works, so just go to go to YouTube on my, so you can search for my channel on YouTube, so just go to YouTube and in, in my channel, just search for Telesco Learnings. Here, uh, if you go to my channel, I have a different playlist, all together new playlist for Java 8. So if you can search for Java 8 here, so we have Java 8 features. And if you go to Java 8 playlist, you will find, you will understand how that thing works. So just watch this playlist, you will understand what I mean by that. May not be this playlist, but uh, I, have a, I have two playlists for Java 8. Okay, this one. So you just have to watch this playlist to understand how that thing works. Okay, so let me just, uh, I, will, I will paste this link in the uh, description area. Now let's come back to the topic. So we can print in this way and we can print in the enhanced for loop way, right? So we'll be using enhanced for loop. Let me remove all this stuff and we'll be using enhanced for loop to print the elements. So we have a list of elements which is uh, numbers here and you can simply sort those elements with the help of this concept, right? With the help of collections.sort. But let's say if you want to uh, print the reverse order of sorting. So let's say if I run this code, you can see we got all the elements here in the sorted format. If you want the reverse order, I mean the, in descending order, what you can do is once you sorted that element, just say collections dot reverse. So you can see we have reverse method and mention the values here. So what it will do, it will reverse your values. And if I run this code, you can see we got the order in its descending format. But let's say I have a different logic here. So let's say I have the element as 309, we have 998, we have 774, we have 233 and we have 88881. So we have these numbers. Now how I want to sort, I want to sort these elements as per the last value. So this 9, 8, 4, 3, 1. So I want to sort in this format. So the output should be, oh, it's already in sorted format, right? A descending order format. Uh, let me just change the value to 6 and uh, this one to 5. So it should be 1, 4, 5, 6, 8. So that's why it should print the output. But even if I run this, you can see the output is not that we, what we want, right? I don't want to do reverse here. I just want to print in a sorted format. But sorting should be done with the respect with respect to the last number or the last digit of the number. Now, how that possible? The problem is whenever you work with collections dot sort, it will take the value as it is, right? So it will compare two objects. So it will use a sorting technique. So if we talk about any sorting technique, doesn't matter if it uh, a bubble sort, quick sort, doesn't matter, right? Uh, it will what we are getting is sorted values, and every sorting technique takes two values as input right so what we can do here is to achieve that we need to mention so if you if you can go to the sort method you can see it ask you for two parameters the first one is the so the first parameter is the array you want to sort and the second parameter if you go to sort so the second the first method it, it takes only the collection the second part the second method sort it takes two parameters one is the list of list of values the second one is the object of comparator. So if you want to change the logic of the comparison, so let me just mention values. So if you want to change the values of the, uh, if you want to change the way you compare elements, you need to pass the object of comparator, which will define the logic of sorting. Okay, so let me, let me repeat. We need to mention the logic of this sorting technique and we need to mention that in the object of comparator. Now question is how to get object of comparator. So we can see we have comparator interface in Java. Okay, we are working with integers. So we'll specify the generic there. And we can say we have a comparator. We'll say this is comp equal to. The problem is this comparator is not a class. It's an interface, right? So unfortunately, we cannot use a class. We cannot create object directly. So what we can do is we can create one more class in this package. I will say the class name is uh, comparator impl. Okay, we can give any, any class name for that matter. And let's click on finish. 
So what this class will do, this will implement the interface comparators so that we can create the object of this class for value of type integer. Okay, so since we are implementing the interface, we need to define all the methods which is inside this comparator. Okay, and the methods are, so we have this method which is compare. It, compare. So you can see we just have one method. Okay, and that's the advantage, we, one method not a big headache here. So how this function, how this thing works, you just need to pass. So initially, we will not sort according to the last digit, we will sort in, in general. So how it works, so we have to say O1 is greater than O2, if that is the case, we will return 1. Return means you have to you have to exchange the bits. Otherwise, we'll say return zero. Okay. Uh, in fact, we don't have to mention that. We just have to say return zero, or we can even say return minus one. No need to mention zero there. And here, so once we have created this class, which is comp impl, which implements comparator. Let's go back to this class, and and then we can say new comp impl, which is comp impl here, right? And then we can mention comp. So that we need to pass this object here. And if I run this code, you can see we got the sorted values. So we got 236, 509, 305. This is possible with the help of this thing. So it passes two values, it passes two, two objects initially. So initially it will pass 305 and 998 to this to this method. It will compare those two elements. If the first element is greater than the second element, then we have to swap. How to mention that we need to swap? They will return minus one. So minus one means swap. Sorry, plus one means swap. Minus means minus minus one means do, do not swap it. Okay. What what happens if I change the logic? If I change the logic, it will sort it in the reverse format, right? So that's that's how this thing works. But hold on, we don't want to sort it with the help of the first digit. Okay, we want to sort it with the help of last digit, right? For that, we, we will just say percentage 10. Now what is this percentage 10? It will give you the last value, right? The uh, so whenever you divide a number by 10, or we, whenever you use percentage sign with the help of 10, it will give you the last bit, right? The modulus. And if I run this code. You can see we sorted with the help of the last digit. So simple, right? You can do it anything. You, you can do anything now. We can we can sort it with the help of last two digits. So we can just say mod 100 and mod 100, right? So it will sort with the help of last two digit digit now. So let me just go back to my class, run. So you can see we got 05, we got 36, we got 74, we got 81, and we got 9998. Right, so we can apply any logic here. So depend upon this logic, it will sort your class. So you can sort a string according to their uh, number of the, the length of the string. You can sort the collection with the help of anything you want, right? Your logic can be anything. The important thing is, if you want to implement your own logic, we need to use this method compare, which is inside comparator interface. And in this sort technique, you have to mention the object of comparator. Simple. Uh, we can do one more thing here. Instead of mentioning the uh, the new class, what we can do is we can use the concept of anonymous class, right? So if you're familiar with anonymous class, that's great. We can simply say comparator. Uh, if you don't notice an anonymous class, again, you can go back to my channel. Uh, you can actually search for uh, anonymous class in Java. And you can also mention my channel name. So you can see, you can just watch this playlist of inner classes in which one of the video you can see oh that's me so one of the video is anonymous class okay you will understand how anonymous class works okay and if you like that video just make sure you like the uh, like button here okay so how to do that uh, so if you are implementing an anonymous class just copy this code we just we don't have to do much just uh, we can just copy this code and paste that code here Okay, so no need to mention a new class altogether, right? So we are not using any class, right? And if I run this code, it still works, right? So we are sorting with the help of large digit. But if you know the concept of lambda expression, again, uh, what is lambda expression? You can uh, you can also watch the last video here. So this last video deals with the lambda expression. So if you want to convert this thing into, so I will suggest just pause this current video, 
go back to this channel and go back to this video and just watch this video of, of lambda expression you will understand how lambda expression works okay and come back to this part so you can do the same thing with the lambda expression is because this stuff here from here to here this is extra stuff we don't require this thing so we'll, we can remove that and we can also remove one bracket which is extra and since we are using lambda expression so after the method if method uh, method we need to mention the arrow symbol here and in lambda we get an advantage you don't have to mention the uh, the type of elements you are working with you can just simply mention o1 and o2 right and if you can run this code you can see we got the same output we can also reduce the number of lines here right so we can just reduce the number of lines okay i'll remove that okay now so we we, we got uh, we got we are getting compared to object here itself right there's one more thing instead of using uh, this concept we can use ternary operator now how ternary operator works we can say return if o1 o or not this o1 mod 10 is greater than o2 mod 10 then return 1 else return minus 1 so we can write it in one line right and the awesome thing is whenever you work lambda expression you don't have to even mention the return type or the return keyword oh so uh, since we are working with ternary operator we have to mention the return operator unfortunately let's let's run this code now so you can see we got the same output right now the thing is uh, we can also use anonymous object here so we can just copy this code cut and we can paste it here so we can write anything everything in one line we don't have to write multiple lines here you can see it still works and if i run this code here we go we got one four five six and eight okay so it's that simple if you still want to understand in, in depth, again, I will suggest go back to this, this playlist and search for this video, which is Inner Classes with Lambda Expression. So that's it, how you sort the elements with the help of comparator. So we, have actually, we are actually using here something called as comparator interface. So that is from this video. Thanks for watching and do subscribe for, for the videos.